going to be cutting out the gun case for the Comrade. Um, not going to be at the range today, it's Saturday. Um, we'll be there tomorrow, though. but I'm going to go ahead and cut the foam for my Comrade shotgun firearm. And I've got a Plano 42 inch case, which I'll show you later. Uh, it comes with a pick and pluck foam, which is not my favorite. It kind of looks jaggedy, like pixelated, so I would go to uh, Carolina Custom Foam and you can get um, the foam patterns that are already foam, not foam, foam patterns that are already cut out for your specific case. Plano 42 inch all weather case. Oh my god. So, parts you're going to need is to trace out your weapon. Okay. The long sharpie it just makes life easier when you're doing all your tracing because you want to get as accurate as possible. My philosophy is make it as perfect and accurate as possible. That allows for screw ups, and the screw ups won't be that bad. Also, get you a lady killer. This is a fish scaling knife, sharp as hell. Um, uh, this is going to be for your tight corners and starting. And the main ingredient is going to be your turkey carver. Um, you can use this to also cut your turkey, but I don't recommend it. This is specifically for gun cases. Don't, don't let your wife have this. Um, but if you're lucky enough to have your wife cook and cut turkeys, then you're doing good. She's not here, she can hear me. So, with that, once I get done, there's other issues like the finger hole, the grab holes, and I'm going to show you how to do that too. Um, all this I learned on YouTube, uh, and I've kind of taken ideas from a bunch of different people and compiled them into what works best for me. Plasti dip, we're going to plastic dip this thing when you get done. The foam is like you would think it's foam, but the plasti dip gives it a different texture, hardens it, and keeps the edges from getting all jagged. Uh, you're going to take a weapon in and out of this case a lot, and uh, things like the red dot and the, just the sharp edges of the weapon itself catches, and it can eventually tear. But the, the plasti dip will aid in hardening the, the foam, and it gives it a nice texture. And also you can do different colors. So on the Kalashnikov Comrade, it's the tiger pattern, so I'm gonna be using dark earth and uh, like a tan, I think it's called coyote. I don't know, but it's gonna be brown and tan. So um, let's go ahead and start with the tracing and I'll show you how that's done. So just lay out your weapon in the case as you desire. There's no wrong answer here except for you want to be at least an inch away from the edges. You want at least an inch away from, uh, nothing should be touching. It's like your food, you want your food touching. I'm just kidding, I love my food touching. Um, if you have a foldable buttstock, go ahead and fold that all the way in so you have the room. I know it's a pain to adjust it when you fire it, but just do it, you'll save more room. So once you get the layout that you're happy with, um, go ahead and remove Things like the mags, unless you want to start with the mags first, but um, I usually start with the weapon first because that's the most important thing. Get the layout you want and go ahead and get ready to trace it. All right, so let me pull this all this slop out of the, out of the case and I'll get to tracing. Okay, so got the weapon laid out. Also, a key point is I don't want all the weight resting on the uh, on the rail here with the, the dots and the lasers. So. Um, I'm gonna face it this way. Now, some people like to put the the scope upward, so when they're carrying the handle of the case, the gun is upright. Uh, it's such a tight fit in there, it really doesn't think it matters. But also, keep in mind the weight distribution. I've got all the weight up here, and I'm gonna have my magazines kind of laid down here, the heavy ones. So the weight will at least be distributed correctly, and that does keep the, um, the pressure off all one area. It just makes it easier to carry as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and start tracing it. So what you wanna do, is get as close as you can to the weapon itself without getting too ridiculous with the the nooks and crannies but again the more perfect you trace the weapon the better results you're going to have and allows for more uh, allows more room for error which i would suggest don't make the errors now you don't have to get too crazy you like to get in between the scope mounts um, I might do just a little bit of a dip in the crevices, but all in all, you just want to trace the overall outline. Sorry if I'm blocking your view. Um, this is my first time trying to record this. Usually I don't give a shit, um, but I will try to make this camera friendly. 
So also when you go to cut this thing, you want to cut all of the ink. You don't want to leave any, uh, you don't want to see any ink left because you're that close. And if there's ink left, <clears throat> that means it's probably going to be too tight of a fit and you're going to have to go back in and cut it with a knife separately and that kind of sucks. And you end up with jaggies. We don't like jaggies. Try to get the your grip as close as you can because we're going to end up burning uh, finger pull holds for that. And around the magazine release, I'm not going in between there. I'm just going to I'm going to draw on the angle of the mag release. Um, again, there's no sense tracing all the fine details. You just want surface contact as much as possible with the foam and the weapon. Uh, that ensures a snug fit and ensures that the weapon stays in place while you're banging around with your case. Right. So almost done tracing. Now once I get the weapon traced, I will go ahead and put the magazines back in there and trace those out as well. Uh, you do all your tracings first, hopefully, obviously. Uh, once you get everything traced out, then you move to the cutting stage. And I will show you how to do that as well. That's the kind of guy that I am. So, voila. Got the weapon traced. That's why you want that real long nose, needle nose, fine point, black sharpie. You can get them on Amazon. Get them on eBay. eBay myself because the shipping's faster. Um, Amazon just takes their sweet ass time on shipping you things. I ordered uh, some ball bearing wheels for a pulley system that we're going to be doing on the gun range. And it's going to be here in August. <laughs> Get your shit together. eBay has it stuck to me in what, nine days. That I can handle. But anyway, and we're going to run our magazines along the line. You want to be an inch away from the bottom because you just don't want it too thin of a foam here because it'll break. Knowing you, it's going to break. Knowing me, it's going to break. So there you have it. All right, I want to get the mags drawn in and I'll get back with you when that is done. You got the gun all laid out here. The foam's ready to be cut. Um, so this is where Lady Killer comes in. So what you want to do is you want to start your incision. All your incisions, all your cuttings with your your turkey baster here should be parallel to the foam. So if your foam's here, you want to be perfectly straight with that. You want to be at an angle. You have to, you have to figure this out on your camera. I don't know what I'm doing, but you got you got to shove it in there straight. You don't want to cut an angle, so you want to be very parallel, perpendicular, flux capacitor, whatever that word is, you want to do that. So you start your cuts with this. When you get into these tight cuts, which you can't really see on this GoPro, when you get into your tight corners, you can use this instead of trying to make the, the corners with your turkey baster. Um, this will make it a lot easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and start incision somewhere where I can get a nice clean, um, nice clean wound in there. And then I'll, I'll get the turkey carver and shove it in there. All right, so I'm not gonna make y'all painlessly watch this, so I'm gonna do it and leave the camera rolling and then I'll fast forward it so you guys want to watch all that. So here we go. And then I'm gonna cut on the outside of the ink. That looks pretty straight to me. Lady killer. Keep it handy. Always keep it handy. So they keep saying when you go to cut these things that let the knife do the work, um, whatever that means. I'm kind of pushing the damn thing, but I guess you don't want to uh, run it through so hard. Uh, yeah, let the knife kind of garf through it like it's supposed to do. You don't want jagged edges. You want a nice, clean cut on this thing. Again, try to do it as perfect as you can.
so the flip this thing around now and show you uh, how to pull it out there. It's kind of self-explanatory, but some of you And we get the edges. You can always take your sharp knife and cut it. You don't want to pull it if you notice there's areas that are not thoroughly cut. Um, you can always go back in with a knife and kind of sever that. Again, you're going to try to avoid the jagged edges. The jagged edges look like crap uh, when you're, you get the final product. So here's a spot right here that didn't get cut all the way. So be careful not to cut yourself. Like I did the first time. Cuts really easy. It helps to have a super sharp knife. And again, just don't force it. Easily see where you didn't cut, and you can try to make perfect cuts with your knife. Pull it out of there, hopefully, without tearing anything up. Something looks very strange right in this area, so let me see what I got going on here. Very terrible cut. So, go in with your knife. do this it's gonna look like shit. I have to fix it later or just have a case that looks like shit. So here we go the gun foam is now coming out. Use this later when you go to do the um, the plastic dip because um, I'm gonna try to get the inside of uh, this area here. I'm gonna try to get this area here uh, a different color than the actual top of it to have a two tone effect. So you can keep this. Um, uh, so you turn it upside down, put the thing back in there, spray paint it. You have to figure that out on your own. I'm not going in detail on how to paint your shit. So um, I've done it. It works. But keep this. I've used it several times. Also, if something is um, shallow, this is two inch foam. Uh, some things aren't two inches, so it'll be counter sunk too far, like magazines. If you're doing the, you're putting your pistols in there as well with magazines. I uh, found that the magazine is not two inches and it's way deep in there. So what you can do is you can take your foam and cut it horizontally and re-sink that back down in there. And I also use, I don't have it up here, 3M spray paint or spray glue. You can just glue it back in there. Uh, but keep these. Never know what you're going to use them for. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting the magazine ports out and then it'll be done. It'll be ready for uh, the first coat of plastic dip. The first coat is going to be the primer uh, because I want the colors to show up better. And this foam sucks up plastic dip like a mother. Don't cheap out and use regular spray paint because regular spray paint oh, melt it. Don't, don't be stupid. This stuff's expensive. Um, the white and the red's okay, the black's okay, but when you start getting into like the camo uh, plastic dip, sometimes they make you buy like four or five cans, 12 cans at a time, it's $100. I'm not doing that. So uh, you look up on eBay, Amazon, whatnot, and you'll find your foam, I'm sorry, you'll find your uh, plastic dip there. And uh, yeah, so we'll get to the paint here in a minute and we'll join back when that's done. helps to drink while you're doing this. And I'm going to actually go plastic dip this. Show you guys how to spray paint. But my wife informed me that there are stupid people out there. Not the people that watch these kind of videos are stupid, because you're not. Um, but people like me who like to shoot guns need help spray painting. So anyway, so here's what the case looks like cut foam and the primer bottom um, so this is gonna look a different color probably gonna be um, I don't know maybe the darker for something and the sides again are gonna be a uh, the darker same color I might do something with the top other than black I'm not sure I'm actually gonna use the uh, the pick-and-pluck foam up here because it's flat 
and I'm gonna definitely gonna um, gonna paint it. And I'm gonna have a Russian star because we are talking about a Kalashnikov weapon uh, system here. So, so anyway, the foam primer white. Again, I think it's inch and a half. Okay, so all you gotta do is pull it out of the bottom and just plastic dip it. Um, again, I like primer. If you're gonna do any other color other than black. If you're going to paint it, I would definitely primer it white just to get a, a more of the richer uh, color out of that because uh, it's, it's stuff that soaks up the plastic dip pretty well. So you don't want to waste your plastic dip and have a dull color. It looks bad. So, um, All right, so I'm going to get take this thing downstairs in a well-ventilated area and I'm going to plastic dip it. It's my basement. It's well ventilated. I like the smell. It's really dark and... Um, this is the, the gun foam and it's actually turned upside down because all I'm trying to do right now is paint the edges a primer because uh, I'm thinking, I'm not sold on it yet, but I might paint that a different color. So, um, plastic dip, you just get kind of close to the edge and you just paint it. Pretty simple. The magazine, the magazine slots, you don't have to focus on those too much because you really can't see them. So if you're going to do a fun color, it kind of defeats the purpose if you can't see it. All right, so why bother? Plastic dip is expensive. Save your dip. And since this is the bottom, no one's going to see it. It doesn't really matter if you uh, spray the top here. You want to try not to because, again, plastic dip is expensive. So this is overkill, probably. But who with weapons does not think is overkill? But definitely focus on the areas that you will see, the wide open areas. Uh, that would be wise. But I'll do a few coats of this. Um, not a whole lot because I want to get get it finished. All right, check back. So I got the gun foam primered and I pretty much just painted the entire bottom white. Um, you probably don't have to do that, but I did. Um, inside. So what I want to do is paint the primered part. Um, it's like a dark earth, coyote kind of color. And I'm going to paint this uh, black. Then I'll paint the top, which is the new top. This is the pick and pluck foam that's supposed to be the bottom, but I'm going to um, repurpose this for the top because I'm going to spray the Russian star on there for the clash and call. That'd be pretty cool, I guess. All right, so yeah, I just put the the top part of the gun foam back on there, and I'm going to hose it down. That will give me at least the outline for the bottom part. Uh, so once I get the sides all covered up with the, the OD green, I can pull this back up, and you will see the silhouette of the gun. And then I'm just going to spray around the silhouette just to make sure that all everything's covered. It's going to be hard to get in uh, between the, the magazine slots. So that's why I'll just pull it up and just do it down there. All right, so we'll see what it looks like when I'm done. We'll see if it shows up even, who knows. Okay, so I just applied the first coat. And the lighting is terrible in the basement, but um, you can probably see the contrast. So what it is, I just sprayed around the edges, I'm not caring if I get it on top here, so I'm gonna paint that black, and I'll show you how that's gonna happen without getting black paint back down in there pretty easy. You just stick the foam inserts back in there because you saved them. So the bottom part was solid white. So that gives you an idea of the contrast of the color. And again, I'm going to go over that heavily with, uh, with, with the, um, the Plasti Dip. almost called it Flexstone. Remember that stuff? Well, yeah, well this is Plasti Dip. So anyway, I'm going to hose it down with that just to make sure it's nice and dark. And I, you know, I don't want to see any of that white stuff through contrast looks all right in my opinion um, so I'll, I'll probably dump the entire can on this uh, I'll save a little bit for the top um, but it won't take much because the that whole thing there is should be pretty easy to just to coat but it should look pretty good when I'm done you using the eye of the holder always remember that So, got all the foam pieces cut so far, and uh, you can see the, the 
inside edge of the cut is going to be a red. That's a pretty cool effect for the white paint in there. Anyway, it's like a candy cane. Um, the top of the foam is the Russian Red Star. And believe it or not, that is supposed to be Dark Earth or something, some kind of plastic dip camo. Ah, I forget what color it is. It's the tan. Coyote, maybe. Who knows? Uh, but anyway, so what I'm going to do now is the bottom portion is already done. You kind of see the gun silhouette still in there. That'll be showing. And it um, looks kind of splotchy in this video, but I got some paint. I might touch it up. I don't know. Um, so anyway, what we're going to do now is coat the, the black. And how you do that without getting your edges ruined is you're going to replace the, the foam that you cut out. And you're just going to stick it back in there. And then you paint the whole top. And that does it. That uh, keeps it nice and copacetic. Get that taken care of, and we'll see what it looks like inside the case and once it dries. Uh, I've heard people telling that the plastic dip takes, I don't know, about a day to fully cure. Um, I don't, didn't find that to be the case. It, it dries pretty quick. The stuff soaks up the plastic dip really fast, and it dries really fast, so eh, it's not going to get on your gun, so don't worry about it. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. Um, uh, inserts put back in there. I don't know if that's going to show up or not, but that looks pretty badass as it is. It has a glow, like a red glow to it. But too bad we cover it all back up with black, so. Plano all weather case, 42 inch open. I've got all the foam pulled out because uh, I'm going to show you guys uh, kind of what. very bottom piece you'll put back in obviously it's the bottom now eventually um, I'm going to glue all this down with the, um, the 3M the paint I mean sorry it's glue self adhesive it's pretty sticky um, but I'm going to spray the all the bottom spray the bottom of the foam first and then maybe spray a little bit light on the on the case just to make it make sure it sticks so that part goes down first and for the top for the top section, I've got the pick and pluck foam, which came from the bottom piece, but I don't like it, so I'm going to put that up top because I bought a stencil off eBay. Man, it's the star, you can see. Yeah, it's the star. Um, but I also painted the pick and pluck, the dark earth, and it simply just goes back in there. And again, I'm going to glue that down so you can barely see the pick and pluck. see it a little bit but uh, I guess the more plastic dip you add the less textures you'll see like on some of them you really don't see them that much but anyway this will pick and pluck so these two are the same color I know earlier in the video I said that I was going to paint the edges of the foam uh, dark earth but I really meant to say is I want to paint it red I meant to say red uh, so anyway, it's red so all right so I've lowered the here's the the cutout part here's the back of it back of it you can kind of see these are the foam inserts that I left in there so it would cover up the um, the red insert paint job that I did it'll make sense when I pull these things up so anyway put it back down in there and make sure it's now again this part will be glued to the bottom part so what I want to do now is pull out the inserts I do apologize for the terrible, terrible lighting that I have. Maybe you can see better on this side. I'll go ahead and pull the buttstock out. Now, the Plasti Dip did make it kind of sticky, but it should pull out no problem. So I'm going to put the camera back on. So, pull it out. The Plasti Dip definitely gives it a, a stronger texture than the standard foam. Uh, the standard foam over time will get all flimsy and start to uh, flake out on you. God knows we don't want anything flaking out on us. 
that's, that's terrible. So, and I will probably run back upstairs and grab the weapon so you can see how everything looks once everything's assembled. But I just wanted to show you guys kind of the steps, the procedures, and the end result. And just looking at it, I guess I'm happy with it. I mean, no one looks at a 12 gauge shotgun, semi automatic, and frowns at it. But this is the end result. Yeah, see, I wanted to paint that. Eventually, painted that darker, so I wasted some uh, some plastic dip. But now it's a uh, now it's red, or should star red. The bottom is dark earth. Uh, it's kind of they call it brown. Uh, the plastic dip people do. Um, so, all right. Well, that's what it looks like. I'm gonna get it glued down. Let me see if I can get a good shot of it that way. I'm gonna glue it down, and it'll be done. Sure, it looks pretty neat. Um, I'll grab the weapon, and we'll see what it looks like from there. I'll be right back. So here we are, got the weapon inside the case. This is the, again the Kalashnikov Comrade 12 shotgun. So when you put it back in the case, um, it should fit pretty snug. And sometimes you might have to kind of push it in a little bit more to get it to fully countersink. Uh, over time that will get better, but if you see a place where it's hanging up sometimes, like a lot of the sights, this one has iron sights on it, and sometimes you don't take that into consideration when you're cutting out the foam. And you might have to come back in with your sharp knife, the lady killer, and just kind of chip away at it. But you might have to touch up the paint. But all in all, that's what it looks like. It's in there secure. It ain't going to move around. So that's what it looks like. Looks pretty sharp, um, in my opinion. The mags are giant. I mean, these are the 10 rounds. They're so big. Um, but I did take into account for shells, you know, you had to cut out a little round thing right there, but, um, mags are giant, they're just sexy, but that's it, this is the, this is the job, and what I'm going to do next, uh, and I'll probably show you, end up showing you guys, I've got a, uh, a copper pipe that I heat up with a blowtorch, and I will cut finger grabs, holes in there, because when you pull this weapon out, you mean, where are you going to grab it from, who knows. So I'll probably put two on the, like I did the AK, I did put two here on the, wherever it looks logical to grab this thing out of here. Probably not that because I'll, you need to get leverage. So I might put it around the um, the, how, the tip of the howitzer cannon thing here. So thing's so giant. I don't know, I'll figure it out. Maybe, who knows, it doesn't matter. It's wherever you like it. So that's where we're at right now. And as soon as I get the finger holes, I'll probably already have it glued in by then, and you will see the absolute final product. But it's going to look like this. Looks pretty cool. All right, I'll be back. Now we're going to burn the finger pulls. So what you're going to need is a hot flame. You can use whatever you want. Put the stove if you have to. Uh, and a copper pipe. And some channel locks because guess what? This shit is hot. So. You kind of want to already have an idea of where you want your finger pulls to be. Uh, I learned this off a dude on YouTube, and he's like, yeah, I just heat it up for 10 seconds, but, you know, I do, I do things the difficult way. So I heat it up until it's real damn hot. It's basically going to melt the foam, and it's going to cut this little finger grab in there. So it should be hot enough. Turn off your flame so you don't burn the house down and just get an idea where you want the finger pull. So I'm gonna do it a semicircle around the guard, the hand guard, and I'll push it down. And it just burns right through it. So push it down quite a bit. You really only need to go about halfway. And I will leave it kind of like that and I'll go back in with a knife later and maybe some black paint to touch that up because it looks like crap. But it's easy to fix, so don't worry. Um, helps to also have a clean copper pipe. This one's already used, so it's got some multi foam on there already, and that's what that white stuff is. So maybe if I just heat it up more, or flip it over to the other side and use the clean side, wouldn't have that problem. Live you learn. But uh, a couple sprays of the Plastic dip should cover that right up nicely. Or hell, it might wipe off, who knows.
Yeah, finger grabs are kind of cool. I mean, it just makes it so much easier so you're not tugging on the actual thing itself. I'm gonna let that burn for a minute. Don't care if it burn house down. It's hot. And, oh yeah, that was much better. Hell, the foam. <laughs> Let me try. <coughs> Damn it! Let me try the other side. Well ventilated helps. There you go. Pulls right out. I'm gonna go back in and clean that up some. So that's how you do it. You melt the rest of this toxic stuff off of here. Yeah, well ventilation area. Well ventilated area probably is preferred. I don't know. Usually people are so safety conscious, but. We are playing with firearms here, so get over it. All right, nice and hot, nice and hot. Now I decided to put the other finger grabs on the, the barrel side. Just want to make sure you heat the sucker up good, like I am doing. Again, a little left large. I'm going to leave that flame running about halfway down. Big enough for your sausage fingers to fit in there. I'm going for two. Got it. <coughs> Good lord. Oh, God. Just kidding. It ain't that bad. Turn off the flame. And voila. Make sure you don't set that thing down on anything plastic because it'll, it's still hot. Awesome. crappy one but hopefully that hopefully that wipes off and I'm gonna get in there and clean that up with the knife this one came out pretty decent and this I just pull that out no big deal throw it on the floor wife ain't looking all right so now I'll put the weapon in there and we'll see how that goes So far, it goes in pretty nice. So here we go with the finger grabs, the finger holes, finger pulls, whatever you want to call it. You can simply just reach in there, your fingers. Tutorial, so you can grab it here, and the other hand, you will grab it here, and simply lift the weapon out. And it just makes it easier to pull it in and out. Uh, I've seen a lot of people do it with the mags, but these mags are so, uh, so big they poke out and you really don't need it. So. Folks, it's the Plasti Dip gun case, Plano 42 inch, all weather. Uh, I like them. I got three of them. I've done two, I've done the AK, and I've done the Comrade. I'll be doing the AR 15 next. It's my wife's. We're still waiting on the part, and you need all your parts. Where you cut this foam because if you obviously add a part, it's gonna change the shape. It's gonna change the shape of the foam too. So um, wait till you get all your parts, get it how you like it, and then the final thing is to make your case. Uh, you don't have to do this, but it's kind of fun. It looks neat. It's impressive. You can do whatever your imagination wants on the colors of the, the plastic if you can find it. It's kind of hard to find. Uh, there's a lot of times they make you want to buy like a case of them for 80 bucks, and I ain't doing that. Um, black sell at Walmart, you do it white, white gets dirty, but whatever your heart desires, you can do it. So um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, what tools, how many cans, and all that good stuff. Uh, you know, it's different for everybody. It depends on how uh, thick and good you want it. So um, I usually, if you have any questions, just ask. If you have any tips, if you've done this before um, and you didn't happen to make a video where I couldn't see it, all these ideas came off of YouTube. So if you've done this before and you have any tips or ideas, uh, so something I'm doing that's stupid, something that I'm doing that's, that's costing me money, let me know. I'd love to save some money. So um, leave me comments. And uh, of course, if you like the videos that I'm doing, please subscribe. Uh, I love answering questions and love having fun. So uh, 